there and welcome back to my channel. So we're coming to the end of January 2023 and Samsung is getting ready to unveil the S23 series. We're looking forward to the S23 Ultra, the S23 Plus and the regular S23. But right now what I've been doing is I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra for the past 2-3 to three months. So. Is it worth upgrading? Maybe, probably if you have a S10 or a S9, maybe you should think about upgrading. But is it worth upgrading to the Samsung Galaxy S23? You know, maybe the Ultra, maybe the Plus, or could you go a little older but still enjoy a lot of the benefits that a high-end phone has to offer? I'm Stefan Williams for 868 Tech TV, and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra in 2023. The Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is a beautiful device and even in 2023, it's still modern by today's standards. There has been some debate over which Ultra was the better design, the S21 or the S22, and if social media is anything to go by, I think most persons would choose the S21. The smooth aluminum sides are only interrupted by the antenna bands, the power and volume buttons, mics, speaker grill, SIM tray and the USB Type-C port. The way the camera bump melds into the phone is sleek and beautiful. I love how it extends away from the phone and gives you some leverage when holding it. One of the negatives of that camera bump is the way the phone rests on any surface unevenly. If you're someone who likes to have your phone resting on your desk while replying to messages, you're out of luck. The constant rocking is just off-putting. It's all protected by Gorilla Glass Victors in the front and back which offers stellar protection. I've had this phone for at least a couple of months and it's as good as new even when using it without a case for weeks on end. The dimension that included in all of this is an IP68 dust and waterproof rating. The matte black color I have also helps reduce fingerprints and smudges, but it's just a bit too smooth. If left on your couch, arm, or anywhere precarious, you should expect some slippage. Sometimes it even slides out of my pocket when getting out of the vehicle if I'm wearing pants that's too smooth. So putting a case on it not only offers protection, but can also prevent it from slipping and falling. Now Samsung phones have become known for their displays and this one does not disappoint. The 6.8 inch screen is the perfect media center, whether you're watching your favorite series, surfing the web or playing games. It hits all the right points with color accuracy, viewing angles plus my favorite peak brightness. You would have no trouble using this phone outdoors. This phone is a beast and even 2 years later, it still runs like one. It's packing 12GB of RAM and running on the Snapdragon 888 which is just only slightly less powerful than the 8 Gen 1 that's powering the S22 Ultra. Just for some context here, the S22 Ultra starts off with 8GB of RAM, so there's a plus to getting an S21 Ultra with a guaranteed 12GB of RAM that could make a world of difference when you're multitasking. Opening and closing apps are fast and lag free. Multitasking and switching between apps are a breeze and that 12 gigs of RAM really shines through during heavy performance. For all you mobile gamers out there, your favorite titles will run perfectly fine even when fully maxed out. While testing this phone in early January 2023, I got the One UI 5 based on Android 13 update. So far my favorite features in One UI 5 has been the stacked widgets. There are more options for your color palettes, the new notification options as well as the ability to set different modes and routines for different times and activities. I also like the auto optimization which restarts your phone from time to time to help improve your device's performance as well as maintain its mode. There is also a new Bixby text call option which allows you to answer and respond to calls via text, similar to what you can find on Google Pixel latest phones. Android 13 also allows you to set different languages for individual apps which is a great feature if you're bilingual or trying to learn another language. There are also new gesture features such as swiping up with two fingers to open split screen mode and swiping down from the corner with one finger to open up into pop-up view. One of the more visual changes can be found on the lock screen. You can change the information, app shown on lock screen, 
and even the wallpaper by holding down on the screen when locked. My favorite is the ability to change your clock layout, font and color. You can even set it to look like an iOS clock. Another underrated feature of the S21 Ultra is the haptics. It's very hard to miss phone calls, texts and general notifications even if your phone is on vibrate. Speaking of notifications, the stereo speakers on the S21 Ultra does an excellent job. It's one of the better speakers you can find on any smartphone. With Dolby Atmos on board and an EQ setup that is very customizable, you can get a good tune out of these. You can immerse yourself in a powerful but clear audio while playing games, listening to music, podcasts, or just watching content. Now, when it comes to security and privacy, you have a wide array of settings to choose from and to set to your liking. One UI 5 have made some improvements with the layout of audio security options so you can easily set which apps has access to your microphone and cameras and even which apps can track your location. Samsung security services are some of the best. The handy secure folder can be used to hide and store confidential documents, files and the likes. You can unlock your phone via the usual pattern or pen. You can use the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor which is almost 100% reliable in nearly any circumstance. There is also face unlock, which I must say in poor lighting is hit or miss, but I have seen some improvements since I have upgraded to One UI 5. Battery life on this is superb. I won't spend long on this subject because there's just no need to. You can get a solid 5 to 6 hours of screen on time with moderate to light usage. Now, there's no crazy 120 watt charging to stand at 25 watts, and you will have to purchase your own brick. It takes about an hour and a half to get a full charge but there's 15 watt wireless charging and even reverse wireless charging. So we're almost to the end of this review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra in 2023. But I know what everyone is waiting on, the cameras. What are the cameras like? What are the specs? How do the photos come out? How, do the, how does the videos come out? That's up next here inside my review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra in 2020. Finally, let's get on to the cameras. Despite what your eyes might be seeing, the S21 Ultra is equipped with a quad camera setup on the back, which features a 108 megapixel main camera, a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens with 10 times optical zoom, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3 times optical zoom, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, plus laser autofocus for good measure. On the front, we have a 40 megapixel selfie camera. Samsung's full suite of camera features are on board, like Director's View, which lets you shoot from all four cameras, not exactly at the same time, but you can easily switch between the three main cameras in the back while still capturing your selfie video, which is perfect for mobile vloggers and YouTubers. I'm not gonna go through a detailed description of each photo, you're gonna be the judge of that. So I'm just gonna show you some photos and videos I took. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you think about the photos and the videos from the S21 Ultra in 2023? So there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra in 2023. Is it the latest? No. Is it one of the best? I would still say that this phone 
is on par with almost all the other flagships even two years later after release. It's running on the latest Android and the latest Samsung software. It has amazing cameras. It's the most versatile camera system I've yet to use with that um, 10 times zoom and a three times optical zoom. You got your super space zoom and all of that. It's an amazing system. The phone is smooth. Um, battery life is good. It's not great, but it's good. And, and there isn't much to complain about an amazing screen that you could use very fairly well in outdoors and bright sunlight like here in Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. So as Samsung gets set to unveil the S23 series, maybe you've got an older phone, maybe you've got an S9 and S10 and S8, this probably is the phone for you. You can get it at a great price, at a great discounted price, wherever you can find it online. And once it's in good shape, you definitely won't regret it. So thank you for watching my review. Let me know if I've you know, changed your mind or if you're thinking about getting an S21 Ultra in 2023. And also stay tuned because I will be having that S23 review sooner rather than later. As soon as it drops, I'm going to try to get my hands on it. I'm definitely going to bring that to you all live here on YouTube. Right? So feel free to leave me a comment down below. And um, let's get in touch. Very soon I'll have a link where you can donate to the channel to help me bring more videos like this. If I get more donations because right here in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't make money from YouTube. So if I can get a little bit of donations, I'll be able to bring more reviews. As soon as those devices hit, I want to do the OnePlus 11, the Xiaomi 13. I want to do all of those um, should come after my S23, even the Pixel 7 or 7 Pro. Let's see how it fares later on this year as well. Right, so leave your comments below. Let me know what device you would like to see me review next. And if you are feeling, you know, up to donating, you can let me know and I'll send you the link. The link will be, it should be up soon, right below this video, right? Hit the like button and don't forget, most importantly, to subscribe so you never miss another upload. It's been nice. I'm Stefan for 868 Tech TV. Until the next one, be safe, everyone. Be safe.